Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the 85th annual session of the Greater New York Dental Meeting. Momentarily, we're going to start our program, and it's a very, very interesting venue. This is brand new technology in which you will see computer GPS technology, which, is, um, which will help guide the clinicians to place their implants. You will see this live on a couple of patients, and three clinicians are going to be working up on stage with a few patients to do this. I've seen this technology a number of years ago. I was very excited and I'm very, very happy that they were able to come and put this program on for us all to see. First of all, we have Dr. Michael Morgan in private practice in Independence, Ohio. He's a periodontist, consultant to the Cleveland Clinic Foundation in Case Western Reserve, a graduate of The Ohio State University. I think this is just about two and a half or three weeks ago, um, Kathy comes into the office. And so we knew Kathy from about two years before, um, but she had uh, wanted to consult about a missing tooth. Uh, number eight, missing uh, approximately two years. There was a traumatic injury uh, much before, so the tooth was, uh, uh, I guess, questionable for some time and finally uh, came out. Okay, just a little side view. And then Kathy's plan. And so once we have that plan made then, we then actually will perform the surgery on a cast of that patient's teeth. And we also placed immediate restorations, rest, immediate provisional restorations that same day. So Mike did the same things he's doing here. He's doing that surgery on the cast of the teeth that he's actually going to be doing. And so if we now refer back to our, our current live patient's case, here is the case with the pla implant placed on the model. And here we point it to the Gingy Hughes then, and then we're going to place our provisional abutment. And from there, we make a, 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 an index of that. As we look from the lingual when the stent was made, what was really nice is that coming right out, of, this hasn't been touched. This is how it comes out of the stent. And out of the mouth, we see there is that restoration polished up. Take you through uh, Kathy's case in just a bit. But again, what we'll do, this is the infrared receiver up on the top. And then, Lana, if you'll hand over the uh, patient tracker. But these are infrared emitters, so I don't know how well that'll show to everybody, but let's, there we go, that, that's probably pretty good. And what they do, uh, they send the signal to the camera. The camera or the receiver will, will track Kathy's movement. But the important part is, if I could show you this, this is the area that we're working in. Uh, and am I off camera? There. There is nothing physically in our way, okay? And then same with the handpiece. It is a standard surgical handpiece and motor. But again, a, a tracker for the handpiece. I don't know if you see that. So as I move my hand, the, the camera's going to track that. It makes all the adjustments. OK. OK, so this tracker, again, can be either attached to a small piece of acrylic that will attach onto the dentition. If we take it to the implant site now, you'll see the bird touching the crest of bone. So we're through the soft tissue where we've done the flap. Now what we'll, we'll try and do is get the orientation. Uh, again, that lower left screen, I believe on your monitor, yes, where you see the crosshairs. Okay, so we're going to try and find that position. And I'm just looking at the computer right now. My mesial and distal buccal angle position is very nice. Now let's work on the angle. Okay, very good. Right now I'm tilting towards the, the mesial. That would be distal, buccal, and lingual. Okay, also if you'll notice on the upper right screen, the, the yellow uh, grid is a, is a representation of the osteotomy. Again, we're gonna go in with a, a round burr first. So again, this is just gonna be a, a bit of a guide. And this does make you a bit more of a precise dentist in a sense. And we're going to go ahead and switch to the burrs. If they come out with a new burr, they will measure that very quickly. And again, we're trying to just zero in on that purchase. And we'll start the osteotomy. OK, so onward and upward. I think that's a good Air Force thing to say also. And we're almost at the depth. If you see very much at the top of that, it might be hard to read on your screens. It says we're within one millimeter of the finish. 
And then we should be there in just a second. It'll start to beep and turn red. Yeah, okay, there we go. Okay, so we're going to switch to the next size burr. Again, things will proceed a little quicker. But again, small adjustments still can be made if need be. If perhaps you looked in there and wanted to change your plan, we talked about on the fly. This wouldn't work today because we're trying to put a very accurate provisional on. But if you saw that you wanted to change the angulation, instead of here, you wanted to perhaps do something like that, you could change the position of the implant uh, on the software and carry out that plan in just a matter of a minute or two. So again, flexible, allows some on-the-fly adjustments. So again, we primarily are looking at the computer screen. Every once in a while, we'll take a look in Kathy's mouth. Thank you, Kathy, you're doing super. All right, and we're approaching the depth, uh, and I think we're fairly well placed. Right there, okay. So in the past, we have used this to navigate within, well within the nerve. I have not done this, but they have cases where they've navigated, if this is the nerve, they've actually navigated right beside the nerve. Um, that one's a pretty interesting application of it. Uh, but it, it allows you to use the patient's anatomy and, and kind of navigate a, across some of those critical areas. Okay, so again, we switch to the, the final size diameter drill. Okay, and again, we'll make sure we're well positioned before we start the osteotomy. And we're good. And this is the one we want to try and be as accurate as possible. You can make mild adjustments again with the initial drills, the final one, we want to be very precise. As I say, this makes you a much more pre precise practitioner. And the true beauty will be, if, if we position this well, Carl will be able to put a provisional in that's been pre-adjusted. Saves plenty of chair time. Okay, just about there, Kathy, you're super. And that'll be very soon now. Okay, so we're right at it. All right, let's go to the uh, long driver, please. We'll go ahead and tighten the implant. 11 millimeter, 40 diameter implant. Okay, and long driver just so that I can keep my fingers out of the way while we're doing this. Okay, we'll start with the handpiece driver, and then I'll. Again, go uh, with the manual instruments. And here, one of the things I didn't appreciate before using the IGI, uh, the image navigation, is even as we're placing an osteotomy, if you start to tilt this way and drive it in soft bone, you can actually still direct that, that implant off your original plan. As I say, it makes you a much more precise practitioner. Again, we'll, we'll gimbal that a little bit. And what we're going to be able to do is control the depth of this very precisely. Again, clinically not as significant. Okay, and we're hitting some good strong stuff, so we'll take and manually do this for just a second. And let's... I don't know how well this will show again. Okay. I think. Yes, we could take the x-ray at this point. Okay, again, so um, I think it starts to show how very precise that can be. The patient experience is very easy. Where it might be, um, I'll just say, the biggest stress might be on the staff setting it up in the beginning only. So there's, there's a learning curve. It's overcome fairly quickly, but uh, once that happens, you can literally, and I think Dan will speak to this later, have someone in the office, scan them, plan, and within the hour do the surgery. So you, it, it's just a wonderfully powerful system. So uh, again, I'm going to turn it over to, to Carl. Are you ready? As soon as, well, they, get, as, soon as they get the x-ray, yes. Okay. We're ready. All right. Thank you.
Okay, so again, it just shows uh, very precise implant placement. Uh, I, I think we're very close to the plan, if not right on. Uh, one of the verification steps will be what Carl does with the provisional. The, the, we understand that the IGI system has an average error of about 350 microns. So normally, I'm going to compensate for that building what I call a fudge factor by leaving the contacts open on the mesial and the distal. And I'll leave them open just light, you know, a quarter of a millimeter, half a millimeter. But in this situation, we just for the heck of it, we wanted to see, you know, I built this to ideal contact, to contact and we're going to see how close we came to reality. So we're going to take the provisional, we're going to place it in Kathy's mouth, I'm going to adjust it to where I can seat it without interference from it, the adjacent teeth. Okay, all right, Kathy, how you doing? Great. Okay. I think what Carl was telling me earlier, what he would generally do is leave that a little shy to start with and add to it. But more as an exercise of precision, he went to the, uh, the full contour today. And if we have to take it away a little bit. Yeah, that's very, 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 very close. Kathy, if you could just very lightly close your teeth together on your back teeth. Close down all the way. And that's, again, if you can see with zero adjustment, that is not too bad at all. Can you open a little bit again, Kathy? Great. All right, so a blind nut gets a squirrel every once in a while, right? Yeah, okay. you got it. You got it. I think it's almost a bullseye. I don't know if we need to adjust it at all. I'm actually going to take, um, put the screw in just to check the contact. Okay, so we're going to actually try to screw it in here. I don't know that we need to make any, any adjustment in the contacts at all. Mike, what were you, what? Thank you. <laughs> one, one important communication thing, obviously, between the, the sure. surgeon and the restorative dentist, or whoever's putting Probably the Probably should give a little plug for the, the savior. All right. Where, where is that? Okay, floss card. That's engaged there now. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's see how we are here. I have nice contact there. I'll tell you, Mike, I don't know that I want to touch that at all right now. Okay, fine with me. I don't know me. that I want to touch that. I'm going to go in now. And I'm actually going to um, um, make sure that the occlusion is okay. So if we go ahead and we built in a little bit, go ahead and bite down for me, Kathy, there now. Uh, can you see in there? We're just out of occlusion. That, I will tell you, that's almost exactly there. That's almost exactly how I um, had it on the articulate. It's exactly, almost exactly how we had planned it. Now I'm a little long here from an aesthetic standpoint. Let's take a look toward me, Kathy. Maybe a little long on the incised ledge, which we knew. I'm going to first of all adjust the occlusion just to her natural teeth. And I also do make sure that she's not hitting it on her lower mm -hmm. retainer. So we're going to do just the natural teeth here first. By the way, Mike, thanks for making my job easy. Thank you. And thank you, IGI, for making my job easy. You know what's neat about this is that normally all my work begins at this point when the surgery is done. Now, my work's almost all done. Okay. Now we're all Perfect. looking at her. She hasn't seen her tooth yet. Open. Okay, all bite, right. bite down. Slide forward, back. Oh no, you're not touching. Bite down again. Well, that was easy. This was easy. I like this. <laughs> and smile for everybody there. Can you smile? If we can, there we go. Smile. What do we think? Not too bad. Can you see it, Kathy? Okay. Mike, okay, very good. Thank you, Carl. No, thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. I didn't do anything. <laughs> That's, that's the way it should be. Okay, um, we'll try and somehow uh, detach Kathy from everything. Kathy, uh, we'll, we'll be back with you in, in a little bit.